Daphne here from Steam Design Lab with the Tilting Marble Maze Design Project. In this video, I'll show you how to make your own marble maze with a hand-controlled tilting feature. The project uses mostly recycled materials like a shoe box, a cereal box, and a cardboard tube. Here's the complete list of supplies that you'll need for this project. And this is a list of the tools. The first step is to flatten your cardboard tube. Press the edges until you have nice crisp creases. Then open it up line up the folds and flatten it in the other direction, creating four evenly spaced folds around the tube. Next, mark the tube one inch up from the edge and draw a line. Repeat on the other side. Now cut along each fold up to the line until you have four tabs. Use the sharp edge of your scissors to score along the lines, then fold each tab up along the line. Place the side with the tabs down on your table and pinch the top end together lining up the two folds on the opposite sides like this. Make a small crease on either side just near the top edge. Now grab a paper clip and spread it apart like this. The important part is the little bend that's left near the center. Bend the two sides up to form a little wave shape. You want it to be big enough to loosely fit the curve of a pencil. I'm going to bend the outer ends so it fits on my tube, but the shape on the ends really doesn't matter. Notice the way I am positioning the wire so that the center curve is just above the flattened edge of the tube. Tape the tube shut. Then center the paper clip on one side and tape it securely into position. Add a second piece of tape to make it extra secure. Now it's time to assemble the tilt control rod. I'm making it with two new pencils. A better choice, if you have it, would be a single dowel rod that is longer than the widest dimension of your shoe box. Cut a piece of masking tape, then butt the flat ends of the pencils to one another over the tape. Roll the pencils to wrap them in tape. Repeat with another piece of tape. Next, I'm going to roll the pencils in a piece of 8.5 by 11 paper. I'm applying a line of glue before I start to roll. The paper will add another layer to strengthen the interface between the pencils, and it will also give a smooth, rounded surface to pivot on. I add more glue at the end, 
but since I'm also using tape, the glue is optional. Hold the center tightly to prevent it from unraveling as you apply the first piece of tape. Then, add a long piece to cover the entire seam. Here you can see how the control rod will sit on the center support I made from the tube and paper clip. Now I'm rolling a paper tube around a hot glue stick, just like I did in the paper catapult video. I will cut this tube into pieces to use as little spacers between my control rod and the maze board. Be sure to apply a line of tape along the entire edge to keep it from unraveling when it is cut. Mark the tube in one inch increments. I mark it for four spacers here, but I only end up using two of them. Here I'm contouring the ends, again just like I did for the catapult project. These spacers were a little hard to handle because they were so small. If I did it again, I would contour the end first, then cut then repeat for the second spacer. I'm marking my control rod at 5 inches in from both ends, then gluing the contoured side of the spacers onto the marks. I'm using hot glue here, but you could use white glue and just give it a chance to dry. Make sure the spacers are level and facing the same direction. Here you see me preparing the shoe box. First I'm measuring it, then I'm marking it in the center. I'll apply glue to the tabs of the center support, then set it on the center lines I marked. The orientation of the support is important, so make sure to install it like this, so that the control rod can roll from front to back and tilt from side to side. The lid on the left of this video is actually the back of my marble maze. For the next step, I will be making slots on the sides that are wide enough for the support rod and that allow me to tilt the maze from side to side. Make a mark at the center, then cut a slot that is about 3 quarters of an inch wide from the top edge to about an inch from the bottom. My box had folded layers in the sides, so I added masking tape to hold everything together. Do the same thing on the opposite side.
space from the cereal box cardboard. When deciding on a size, you want to make sure it's small enough to fit inside the shoe box with room to tilt, but big enough to give you lots of room for your maze design. You also want to leave an extra inch or so around the edges for the sides. I'm using a cereal box which happens to be the perfect size for my shoe box, and the existing fold lines worked perfectly for my corners. I cut off the extra cardboard on the side. This will be used for my maze walls. Nothing will go to waste here. Because the cardboard is a little flimsy, I'm rolling two paper tubes that I will add as stiffeners later when I put this all together. I start by using a hot glue stick in the center, but this time I'm aligning it with the long edge of the paper. I decide to try to make the tube a little smaller so that it will be stronger and easier to attach, so I re-roll it using a pencil as a guide this time. Do the same to roll the second tube. Here I'm using the extra cereal box cardboard to cut my maze walls. I'm making marks three quarters of an inch, then one quarter, then three quarters again. That will make one wall. Repeat the same pattern all the way down the cardboard. Three quarter, one quarter, three quarter. Three quarter, one quarter, three quarter. I'll connect the marks by drawing a line between the three quarter inch spaces. and by scoring with the edge of my scissors on either side of the quarter inch spaces. Then I'll cut along all the lines and fold along all the score lines. Run a piece of masking tape along the top edge to complete the wall. The next step is where you can get creative. This is the maze design I came up with. I sketched it out on the piece of paper you see off to the left, then transferred it to my cardboard base. Here I am showing you how I trimmed and glued my last two pieces. If you would like to see the step-by-step -step process showing exactly how I laid out and prepared the maze, please check out the next video in the series. Here I am using paint to mark my start and finish, as well as the marble path and the traps. If I were to do this again, I would probably paint these details before gluing on the walls and folding up the edges to make it a bit easier.
For the last couple of steps, I will add the control rod and stiffener tubes to the bottom surface of the maze. Draw a line down the center, then mark the location of the spacers to center the control rod. The actual locations will depend on the exact size of your maze. I got lucky, and my spacers didn't land on any of the holes, but you'll definitely want to keep that in mind when you design your maze. Tape on the stiffeners. I placed mine in this direction because there was a fold in the box that I wanted to bridge. Otherwise, I would have taped them along the longest dimension. Time for a quick fit check and my project is done. The tilting marble maze is complete. For more information on this project and others, check out our website at steamdesignlab.com.